Hi, Simon here, and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a teardown on an Asus gaming laptop. And let me show you the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do that. Let's go ahead and take a look on the laptop here. So this is the Asus gaming laptop that I'm talking about. And the layout of the keyboard looks like this. Let me show you the model number in the back. If you take a closer look, it says model FX505G. So I'll be removing the back cover and explain to you each of the components. What are the things that you can upgrade and the things that you can uh, to change it out. So these are the regular Phillips screws. All you need to have is a Phillips screwdriver. I'm using an electronic screwdriver here. If you're curious to know where to buy them, what I'll do is I'll link it in the description below. Um, I got this from Amazon and this is not a sponsor video. I use my own money and purchase the, uh, the uh, electric screwdriver here. So the screws right in the middle is a lot shorter. The rest of other screws are much longer. And all the screws at the bottom uh let's see they are a lot shorter here okay so five screws for the bottom one in the middle they are shorter screws and the rest of other screws are much longer if you like the video please go ahead and hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't i really appreciate you for doing that um that helps me to keep myself motivated to make more of this type of video for you in the near future all right so once you have all the screws removed what the next thing i like to do is to remove the back cover here so you can get a metal prying tool stick it in between the uh the cover All right, once you have all the screws removed, you can just simply pull the back cover straight up and that's how you remove the, uh, the back panel. All right, here you can see the exposure of the CPU fan, the heat sink, RAMs, battery. Here is your M.2 hard drive. And this is the secondary drive for your SSD drive, like 2.5 inch. So the first thing I like to do is to go ahead and remove the battery or disconnect the battery. This is the connector. What you can do is to slide it down. I'm using my two fingernail, slide it down towards my body. And that's how I remove it. Now there's one screw holding onto the, uh, the battery. So go ahead and remove that one screw. Once that one screw is removed, you can just pull straight up on the battery uh, to put it on the side here. So if your battery is not holding the charge, let's just say your battery is swollen or if there's a lump on the battery, and this is where you want to replace the battery. Now, if you want to check out the model here, it says B31N1726. That is the replacement battery model you need to look for. I'll link them in the description. Uh, usually eBay sells them not Amazon because of the lithium ion battery. They might not ship to your location. I'm not sure for what reason that is, but yeah, go check it out. Uh, I'll try to get the link in the description below so they can easily buy the right items um, from the right website. Now, the next step I'd like to talk about is the M.2 NVMe. There's one screw holding down to that. Go ahead and remove that one screw. Once you remove that one screw, you can slide the MVNME drive to your left. That's how you slide it away. And this is going to be um, to remove it. This little uh, sticky thing here is actually what we call a thermal pad. This thermal pad is the one that conducts the heat, pull the heat from the, uh, the chip here and transfer the heat somewhere else. Right. So this is what we call a thermal pad. Let's put that on the side. We're going to reapply back again at the bottom of the M.2 here. Now this M.2 runs on five, oh, it's a one terabyte M.2 drive. And uh, if you're interested to 
CUDA data, what you can do is you can uh, you can buy one of these USB adapter. This is USB uh, NVMe adapter, and what you can do is you can insert the uh, your hard drive, right? And this is the screw. Go ahead and lock it down, or you can have a tape tape it down. And once you tape it down, lock it in, push it all the way in. And you can plug this one into any of the computer, Windows computer. Plug it in and you should be able to recover your data or pull the data out of it, assuming that the hard drive is still working. Okay, so let's put this on the side. Now this is the, the RAM, the DDR4 RAM. So you can go ahead and upgrade the RAM if you want to. Uh, what I did was earlier, I pushed the two little side clipper. This two metal clipper, if you push it away from each other, then the, the RAM will just pop straight up, right? It'll pop straight up, slide it, and that's how you remove the RAM. So these are the DDR4 RAM, and I believe it's 8 and 8. What you can do is you can upgrade to uh, 16 and 16 up to 32. I believe it's 8 gigs of RAM. It doesn't really say here. But yeah, it should be an 8 gigs of RAM. All right, let's move on to the next part here. What we want to do is uh, let's go ahead and remove the fan. Um, so let's explain a more details about the fan here. So let's go ahead and make sure that the tape is not taping things down together. So let's put it on the side. So the connector for the fan, I just got to slide to your left. Okay, so once you slide it to your left, that's how you remove it. Go ahead and remove the two screws. So what I did was I lift the heatsink up a little bit because there's a little lash right here that's holding down to the, the, the copper heatsink. Once you lift it up, you can slide the CPU fan down towards you. And this is the replacement fan. And if your fan is not spinning well, and if you feel like there are a lot of dust here and you like to clean it up, I'll get the Aiken duster, go ahead and dust it out and spray, you know, to, to clean off all the dust. All right, let's put that on the side. This is your Wi-Fi. Uh, as you can see that the white cable is on the top, the black cable is at the bottom. There's an indicator here, the white triangle is for the white, the black triangle is for the black. Go ahead and pull straight up. That's how you disconnect the Wi-Fi cable and go ahead and remove that one screw. Once you remove that screw, you can go ahead and slide the Wi-Fi card to your left. That's how you remove it. Okay, so move on to the next step. This is the keyboard lighting. Remove the sticker. Be very careful. Do not pull the cable and break it. So there's this little clipper right here, the black clipper. Flip it up. I'm using my fingernail. Flip up the clipper and slide that keyboard cable down. This is the backlighting for the keyboard. Move on to this. Open up the clipper. Slide the cable down. That's for your touchpad. Here, open up the clipper. Slide the cable down. That is for your keyboard, right? So let's move on to the next. This is your LCD. Open up the clipper, slide a cable to your right. That's how you disconnect for the LCD. And this is for the speaker. Same thing, slide a cable down. And that is for your speaker. Now let's talk about the, uh, the secondary drive here. So there is the connector right here. This is a SATA connector. It's pre-installed on the motherboard. This is the little bracket here that is ready for you to um, install it. So go ahead and remove one screw. Second screw. So once you remove the two screws, uh, the bracket here is ready for you to install. What you want to do is you want to get one of these um, 2.5 inch SSD drive. And if you're planning to upgrade to a secondary drive, meaning that you're going to have one C drive here on the M.2 and then secondary drive for your data. If you're running out of space, you can install this. 
it doesn't come with the screw so you may have to buy an additional screw or just look around in your cabinets you might have some tiny little screw save them install it and slide it into the uh, the slot right here so that would give you additional storage for the secondary drive all right so let's put that on the side now let's come back here we're going to finish up the the rest of other stuff this is your dc jack connector and if you break your dc jack assuming that um something happened to the connector you might have shoved you know plug in the power connector and accidentally broke it and if just the dc jack is broken nothing else is uh is bad then you can just replace the dc jack this is a replaceable dc jack it connects to the motherboard right so what you want to do is you want to slide the cable away from your body so slide it to that direction what i like to do is push and pull so one finger is pulling and the other finger is pushing it so push and pull that's what i like to do um, to remove any of the cable very easily now same thing this is the uh, cpu fan i'm going to disconnect the cable and get ready to remove the cpu fan two screws once you remove it see if you can slide the uh cpu fan out there you go i just slide it out and it's ready to be clean or be changed right depending on your cpu status the fan all right so so far everything looks good things are disconnected what we want to do next is to remove the entire motherboard so let's go ahead and start removing all the screws If you have any question, comment below. I do reach a comment and I would like to hear from you. And from the comment, I will go ahead and... Uh, hey, Ants. Sorry. I don't mean to kill you, but... Quick reaction. I just... Sorry. But anyway, uh, comment below if you want to uh, uh, have any question. I would go ahead and answer through comments. And yeah, I look forward to, to, um, to hear from you guys. So once I remove all the screws, technically the, the motherboard is ready to be slide out. I'll just lift it straight up. Okay, that's how you remove the motherboard. All right, for, so for those of you who are interested with applying a new thermal paste, assuming that the um, motherboard is overheating and you feel like the motherboard always on a constant high speed, uh, meaning that the um, CPU always run on a high speed, the more likely the CPU thermal paste might be all dried out. So you might want to consider replacing or uh, applying a new thermal paste on it. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm removing all the screws. So four screws on the CPU and four screws on the uh, graphics card. All right, once you have removed them, what you want to do is slightly lift the CPU heatsink straight up. And that's how you can disconnect the uh, the heatsink. As you can see that the thermal paste is all dried up. So that might be one of the reasons why that your CPU always go on a high speed. That your, I mean your CPU fan always go on a high speed. It gets really hot. And um, this is the right way to, this is the, the way to go ahead and apply a new thermal paste. Hopefully that reduce your temperature, sent, um, cooling temperature down. All right, so what you want to do here is go ahead and get the thermal pads. And um, you, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and get the uh, alcohol wipes. These alcohol wipes, you want to go ahead and wipe down the uh, CPU. So go ahead and do that. 
wipe it clean. All right. So same applies for the CPU. Go wipe it clean. All right, what the next step is to go ahead and wipe the heat sink clean as well. You're gonna need more than one thermal pad, but I'm not gonna do it um, here live, not live, but in this video here, but I just wanted to show you that's how you're gonna do it. Once you wipe it clean, clean it out. All right, I don't have any more thermal pads, so you need to have more than one to do this. So once you wipe it clean uh, on a thermal paste, what the next step you like to do is to get this thermal paste compound right i'll link it in the description below go ahead and check it out i got this from amazon once you have this one apply the thermal paste here apply it on the cpu and apply it on your nvidia graphics card and make sure you have clean your therm uh, the heat sink and that's what you need to do to cool off the uh, the temperature now let's move this on the side we are done talking about the motherboard and the cooling stuff Okay, so the next step I like to do is to talk about the keyboard um, and the DC jack. So there are two screws holding down to the hinge. Okay, so let's put that on the side here. So what I like to do is to lift the thing up. Same thing apply on the, this side of the, uh, the hinge. Okay, so again, come back to the DC jack. If you broke your DC jack and you want to change it out, that's how you do it. Remove the hinge, open up the hinge. I mean, remove the screw, open up the hinge. That's how the DC jack would come straight up. All right, once you are done that, you know, make sure that all the Wi-Fi cable is away from the sticker, The this little plastic here. Okay. All right, so this is your keyboard, right? So this is entire keyboard right here. And again, if you spill stuff on the keyboard and if your keyboard is sticky, it's not working, your question is, can I change out the keyboard? The answer is no. The way the, the company makes this keyboard, you see all these little black dots here? They're kind of like a punch down from the manufacturer, uh, the way they make it. So in it's, it's almost impossible for you to repair remove the keyboard and replace it. So the way they make it is all together in one big piece like this. And it looks like this computer here had some kind of a, a spill on the right side of the keyboard, somewhere around here on the, on the keypad. In fact, yeah, in fact, you can see like the stain and it's still moist. It smells like coffee. So something was spilled on the keyboard for sure in the past. Uh, but wasn't sure what was it. But this is what happened when you spill stuff on a keyboard, you would have to replace entire keyboard. No other choice but to do that. And this is your LCD screen. Uh, there are two ways to do it. And one way to do it is to replace the entire hinge that comes with like this, right? With, with the LCD. Or you can just replace the LCD itself by removing the bezel. I'll make a separate video for that if I have time. Um, you may want to come back and check it out and if you haven't go ahead and click the subscribe button and the notification bell if I do happen to make another video for just the screen replacement on this model then you get to be notified and watch the video so until that uh, this is the teardown and if you like it please go ahead and hit the like button I really appreciate you for doing that um, thanks for watching the video and I hope that this video give you a guidance on how to do your own repair uh, or maybe an upgrade. So until next time, please take care. Bye now.